Welcome to the first video of section 3.5 on the chain rule. The goal of the section is to learn a chain rule for functions of several variables. As we've done in previous sections, we'll begin by reviewing relevant information about functions of a single variable. So if f of x and g of x are differentiable functions, then the chain rule for a function of a single variable tells us that the derivative of the composition f of g of x is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And if we let y equal f of u and u equal g of x, the chain rule can be rewritten in what is called Leibniz notation. dy dx is dy du times du dx. And one advantage of this Leibniz notation is as a mnemonic device. A mnemonic device means a memory aid. So it helps us remember how the chain rule goes. Because although it's not actually what's happening, it looks like the du cancels out and we get dy dx. That is not at all what's happening, but it looks like the du is canceling. Theorem 3.5.1, the chain rule for multivariable functions. Case one. Number one, if z is f of xy, if this is a differentiable function of x and y, where x is g of t and y is h of t, if they are both differentiable functions of t, then z is f of xy is f of g of t of h of t, which is also a differentiable function now of a single variable t. So we can take the derivative with uh, of z with respect to t, so dz dt is, and this is the chain rule, del z del x times dx dt plus del z del y times dy dt. Second part, a more general case. If w is a function of n variables, x1 through xn, and if it's differentiable, and each of the xi's is actually xi of t, it's a differentiable function of t for t from one from i equals 1 to n. That means that w, if you plug in all of these functions of t, is actually a function of t, and it will be differentiable. And dw dt is a generalized version of the above. It's going to be del w del x1 times dx1 dt plus all the way up to del w del xn times dxn dt, which can be written in a more compact sigma notation as the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of del w del xi times dxi dt. Now a couple things to point out before we do an example of the chain rule is first notice that we're very careful here to use dels and d's where appropriate. We use del when the function is a multivariable function, so when the relationship is a partial derivative, when we're taking a partial derivative of a function with respect to its variable, which is sometimes called the intermediate variable, since the final variable is actually t here. Also notice the similarity to Leibniz notation for a single variable. It looks like the x terms and the y terms are canceling out, and if those canceled out, then we're left with two versions of sort of, I mean, it's not quite correct. It's a mixture of dels and d's, but it lets us sort of use this as a mnemonic device, a little memory aid as to how the chain rule is supposed to go. And last thing to notice is the similarity to the total differential. The total differential dz was del f uh, del x times dz, dx plus del f del y times dy. It looks here like we've just taken both sides and divided by dt. Now that is not at all what's happening, but yet again, as a little memory aid, if you remember the total differential, it's easy to remember the chain rule in this uh, case where the intermediate variables are functions of a single variable. It's easy to remember that because it looks like you're taking the 
total differential and just d d dividing, that was difficult, divide, dividing by dt, although this is not, this is not what's happening, that is not a proof, that's not what's happening to find the chain rule. We're not actually going to prove the chain rule, we will just take that as given, and in the next video we will do an example to apply the chain rule in a specific case.